So this next uh, demonstration is to be viewed in conjunction with the course material uh, we've already covered in relation to understanding and connecting with trauma. It's based on Peter Levine's 12-step approach to uh, healing trauma and through somatic re-experiencing. And we're just going to go through some of the um, the exercise, some of the processes. It'll be a shortened version, but we'll we'll kind of speak as we go in relation to how long it's it should normally take. So the first thing is for anybody who's experienced trauma and if you're doing any work around trauma, it's really important to create a safe, contained uh, environment where people can prepare for any kind of. Um, any work for any trauma that begins to come up uh, in their body, through their body, when they begin to move through the rest of the steps. So, if we first of all just sit down in the chairs, uh, find a nice comfortable chair. Um, what you might have recognized in yourself that sometimes you were feeling a little bit frightened, a little bit kind of anxious, a little bit uh, kind of triggered is that you feel slightly disconnected from from your body, from the outside world. Um, and these first few exercises are to really just try and connect with your body. So maybe to come out of your head or to come back from some place you went to so that you're really uh, present with your body. So how we we'll start that off is, uh, we started off with doing some tapping exercises. Um, so we just take our left hand, palm facing upwards, and then just with our right hand, just gently tap all around our hand, palm of our hand. We're not going to do this for too long, but you could do this for ages, just slowly but surely reconnecting with the palm of your hand. And the key here is, as you're tapping, in your mind's eye, just to say to yourself something like, I'm tapping my hand, this is my hand I am feeling. And then as we move up and down the arm, you do the same, the lower arm, this is my forearm, and I feel my forearm beneath my tapping finger. It's the same kind of pattern we'll do all the way up to the arm, to the other part of the arm, the upper arm, as far as our shoulders, back down from our shoulders, down the back of the arm, so you can turn your hand around down towards the ground, maybe. And we're doing this quite fast, but you can do this as slow as you like. A lot of people might spend anything up to a half an hour or more doing this all around their body. Finish the left hand, so we just transfer over to the right hand. Again, we're tapping the palms of our hand to yourself. This is my hand, I'm tapping my hand, I can feel my hand. And now I'm moving up my arm to my forearm, I'm tapping my forearm. I can feel it, it's mine beneath my fingers. And so on, up your arm. Again. As slow as you like doing this one. Put your shoulders. Once you've done that, you just go up maybe just to the back of your neck. Same thing, you're tapping the back of your neck. This is my neck. I'm feeling the neck beneath my fingers. Up the back of your head. Top of your head. Down the sides of your head, including your ears. A lot of you will be aware that if you are kind of triggered or kind of removed from your body, you often have a strange relationship with your face. So be sure to tap all the parts of your face to reconnect, to feel your face beneath your fingers. Feel your cheeks. I can feel my cheeks. These are my cheeks beneath my fingers. Up to your forehead, across your forehead, around your eyes. These are my eyes. I can feel my eyes beneath my fingers down to your neck, another sensitive region, expression of emotions. This is my throat, I feel my throat beneath my hands, down along your shoulder blades. Always speaking to yourself what you're feeling. And it's yours, down the front of your body. Again, as slow as you like, we're going a little bit faster just for illustration. All across your belly muscles, this is my belly muscles. I can feel my belly muscles beneath my fingers. Lean forward, around the small of your back, same time, up as far as you can go, tapping along your spine, tapping your muscles. And moving down to your buttocks muscles, around by your thighs. Tapping all the time, the front of your thighs. These are my thighs, I can feel my thighs beneath my fingers down to your knees, 
rest a while on your knees. Moving down your shins. Eyes open and glaze our clothes, whatever you feel comfortable with. Down to your feet. And all the way around the back of your feet. Back up the back of your legs. Just rest for a second with your hands on the side of the chair, on your lap if you don't have the chair. It's really good to have a good upright solid chair that can really support your frame. So we've began to connect with ourselves. The next thing to do is to connect at a deeper level. So we're going to go through that exercise again, but it won't be tapping this time. This time we're going to be really squeezing most of the big muscles around our body. So we get the muscles on the forearm and just really squeeze it. I can feel the muscles in my forearm supporting my skeleton allows my hands to do things. Moving up to the upper arm muscles, I can feel the skeleton beneath my muscles. This gives me strength to be able to protect myself, to protect others, to do things that are important to me. All good affirmations about being connected to your muscles can do for you. Up to your shoulders again. To my shoulders support my arms and my neck. Okay, back over to the other arm again, forearm first, just repeating the same things. My arms, my skeleton, allows me to write, to draw, to do the things I want to do. Moving up the arm again. This allows us to connect at a much deeper level than purely skin level and really begin to feel into our body and to come back to our body and be with our body. Up to our shoulders. Again, around to our neck muscles. Powerful muscles there on the top of our shoulders. Okay, good squeeze. Really, really, really know that they're supporting your head, your skull. Coming down to your back muscles at the back. Really feeling those back muscles supporting your spine, supporting your ability to stand upright, be upright, stand in your power. Coming around slowly to your belly muscles, those great muscles that protect you in times of trauma, that protect your vital organs. Coming down to your thigh muscles. And the front of the thigh muscles. Down your legs again, round to the back of the shins. Them really strong muscles that allow you to cycle, to run, to walk, to get somewhere where you need to get urgently or quietly or calmly. Back up to the back of your thighs, those strong muscles that support you walking, running, getting around. And just coming back to a state of kind of relaxation again. So at this stage, we're beginning to kind of feel into ourselves. We're beginning to set our own personal space in relation to the environment. But for a lot of people, uh, and this is very culturally relevant, our space in relation to other people is quite important as well. So we're just going to demonstrate how we might just make sure that we don't maybe impinge in somebody else's space. So Nicole is just going to stand up there and I'm just going to create a piece of personal space with the string here for a second. I'm just going to wrap it around her, on the ground, and then I'm going to set at what I think is the appropriate person in space and just check in with Nicole. How's that? No, a bit more. A bit more, okay. So you'll always know how comfortable you feel in relation to people in your own space. A bit better? Yeah, it's okay. Okay. So we'll sit down again there for a second. So uh, once you've kind of established that, if there's no problem if you're kind of in public, if you're in a group, being able to say to people, this is my space, just, you know, I'd prefer if you just kept in, in that place. But it's, it's also good for you, even as a visual thing, doing it when you're doing the exercise, just so you are known, you're aware of how far out you are and how far your kind of need for people to be outside of that area is. So now that we've got that, we're going to move into what we call kind of a grounding or a centering stage where we've started a preparation phase. Now we want to be able to set up a situation where we're able to ground ourselves. And one of the ways we often do that initially is actually we stand up again for this. We might put our shoulders shoulder width apart with our feet, maybe bend our knees ever so slightly. 
And then just again, eyes closed or open and glazed, depending on what you're comfortable with. Just begin to imagine a space on the ground, just beneath your torso, beneath your body, that seems to be the center of gravity, the kind of center point that allows you to balance, allows you to be able to stand up, stand up straight. And sometimes a way of trying to find that is just gently sway, sway around your feet. Some people find it useful to try and imagine their hips are like a kind of a, a bowl, a bowl of liquid that's slowly but surely just swaying back and forth and trying to find the level for that bowl of liquid in their hips. Other people use visual exercises like imagining a shaft of light maybe going down from their head down to the ground. Just feeling that central point. And at the same time when you're feeling that central point, Notice your feet on the ground. It doesn't matter if you're several stories up. The idea is your feet on the ground. By feeling those on the ground, by feeling your center of gravity, allows your body to feel grounded. So we move now from the standing position to the sitting position, but just still keeping that sense of center in perspective. So sitting upright, now that you're sitting again, you might need to transfer that center of gravity slightly. I'll spend a couple of moments to do that. Just find that center point beneath your body. Makes you feel steady, solid. And again, just noticing your feet on the ground, connecting with the ground. I don't know if we'll, well, some people uh, find very useful to do as well. If you're lucky enough to have an animal, animals are naturally grounded. So if you have a dog, if you have a cat, um, and you feel at any stage you need grounding, a perfect idea for grounding is to pet a cat, pet a dog, a horse, a, any animal really. Um, uh, for other people, depending on how, how grounding you feel you need to be, um, people will often just literally, you often see people just getting down on the ground like this. And literally just the closer they get to the ground, the more they're able to feel um, connected to themselves and connected to something solid. So we have our grounding exercise completed now. Um, most of us have managed and we've survived um, whatever traumas we've had in our life um, through developing our own resources, through developing our own supports um through utilizing maybe some sort of internal resources we have at our disposable uh or external resources um you know such as walking etc so at, at this stage before we move into the, the, the more i suppose emotionally connected exercises uh it's a good idea to start maybe listing your resources so for example we might have a notebook or we might be a little bit more creative we might want to write it on a wall or on a, on a notice board and just kind of think about, okay, what are my internal resources uh, that I use in order to be able to maybe manage my anxiety, to be able to manage some of the difficulties I have uh, in relation to, to, to previous trauma. It might be prayer, it might be singing, it might be uh, mantras, it could be some sort of internal meditation. Um, you know, everybody's got their own kind of internal resources that help them get through the day. Um, and then most of us will also have external resources. So for example, I might walk, I might do Tai Chi, I might go for a run, um, uh, you know, meet with friends, meet with family, uh, you know, listen to, to listen to music, lots of different things like this that we might end up doing. Never see this as an exhaustive list. This list can kind of go on forever and sometimes you can add to it. So for example, when a lot of people are doing work around, uh, you know, their own trauma, they increase the type of resources that they use in order to be able to manage the trauma. So this is a kind of a, a, a working project, let's say, and that people can, can use and answer as they please. As we've, we've identified the resources now, I suppose the next thing is, um, there's a couple of little exercises we're going to do, and it's called tracking. Um, one of the things, uh, as we talked about in the course already, is we feel most trauma in this part of our body, which some people refer to as the abdominal reptilian brain. Other people say it's where we have our felt sense. This is where we sense everything before it ever gets into our cognitive brain. 
uh, and this is where the body remembers, this is where the body knows what's going on and records what's going on. So the next set of uh, skills we're going to work on now is tracking skills. So for example, moving between thought and emotion. And we're going to start doing this with something good. So we'd ask people to pick something, an object that they kind of feel comfortable with, that they like, that has some sort of, you know, positive beneficial meaning for them. It might even be a person, but for the illustration, we'll pick an object that we can hold in our hand. So this is one of my favorite crystals. So I'm going to hold that as an object. And the idea is we hold it away from our body. I'm just going to ask you now to just think about that object in your hand. Begin to describe it. Think about what it looks like. Think about different words that might relate to it. And just allow your thoughts to come back, back, back to your body. And to just drop down into your belly, into that place of the felt sense. So those descriptions, those words, how is your body responding to that? Moving back again, back towards the thoughts. And describing this object, nice object, pretty object. You might be thinking about the shape, the color, the feel of it in your hand. And again, then allow yourself to just fall back to your belly, back to your body and drop down to the felt sense. So what we're working on here is we're working on making kind of some sort of relationship between our thoughts and our emotions. So back to the object, describing it, words, thinking about it. And slowly bring it up back to your body, back down, to your felt sense where we can feel the response to that object. You could do this for anything up to 10 or 15 minutes, but for illustration purposes, we just, we just leave that one there for a moment. So that's what you do with an object. A lot of people, me particularly, um, might hold on to that crystal just as they go through the rest of the exercise as they feel it might be kind of a, um, a soothing object to continue with for the rest of the exercises. So now we're going to ask somebody to think about maybe about three days ago when something really good happened for you. You were really feeling in your in a good place um, and something really, really helpful was happening for you. And just allow your mind to wander back to that time about three days ago. What was happening at that time when you were feeling in a good place? Just try and describe it. Think about it. Remember what it was happening. Now just come back from that point, back into your body. Drop down into your belly, down to your felt sense. What your felt sense make of that moment in time? You're feeling good in yourself. Allow yourself to go back to that moment of time again. Allow your thoughts to wander back. Again, back to your body. What we're practicing here is being able to go back to maybe things past, the way you are on a daily basis in relation to what's going on in your life. Allow yourself to go back to memory, to go back to thought, you were thinking about it, describing what seemed to be going on. But then rather than that memory holding you back in that place, allowing yourself to come back to now, come back to your body right now, back to your felt sense, allowing us to begin to relate to what's actually happening in the present in our body now in relation to that past positive, pleasant event. Constricting, and then we'll contract. If you practice this, you might practice it for a significant amount of time. Anytime it seems to get too much, you're going back to that nice time. Just allow yourself to quickly come back to the body, the place of felt truth. 
stop that one there for a moment. Now we're going to ask you to go back a little bit further, maybe about a month or six weeks ago. Again, when you were having a good time, when life seemed quite good, um, and something really kind of pleasant was happening in your life. Exact same thing again. Allow your mind to wander back slowly to that time. Describing what was happening. Thinking about what was happening. Trying to remember what was going on. Just slowly allowing yourself to come back to your body. Down into your belly, into your felt sense. And just like the last exercise, just kind of constantly and slowly, at your own pace, allow yourself to slowly go back to that place about six weeks ago when things were good. On the way back there, you might just stop somewhere in between that place and your felt sense in your belly. And just test. Come back to your belly. sense back all the way back to that time again this allows you to pendulate between time gone by and here and now as you begin to master that skill it becomes a very important and useful skill to always be in touch with your body and to come back with your body in the here and now as opposed to maybe a memory of the past okay finish that one for the moment but again that could go on for quite some time now we're just going to ask you to think of maybe sometime in the last few days in the last couple of weeks let's say in the last two weeks when it wasn't necessarily a good day you know something that was irritating you something that was annoying you um and nothing major but something that was annoying you was kind of um you know more or less you might be kind of um, brand off or you just weren't happy at the time in what was going on in your day. And the exact same process, allow yourself to go back in time. Remember that day, remember what was going on and you just weren't happy with the situation. What were you thinking at the time? What are your memories of what you were feeling? Again, slowly and surely bring yourself to your body, back to your body, dropping down to your felt sense. And staying with that sense, breathing deeply into that sense. yourself to go back to that time again. You may not want to be able to go all the way back, you might go part of the way back. That's fine. Go back as far as you can, as far as your body wants you to go. You can always just come back to your body. Back down into your felt sense. Back to now. What you'll do is slowly but surely Extend the space back in time, pendulating between the past activities, the past memories, and the present felt sense in your body. Okay. What we'll do is we just stop that exercise there. What some people do in relation to this exercise, either the one where you're looking at something good, or the one that you're, lo you're looking at something that was uncomfortable is, they might use photographs, for example. You might put a photograph up on the wall of kind of a, a time when stuff was good or a photograph on a wall when a time when stuff wasn't so good and they'd use the photograph to allow themselves to visualize going back to that time and to come back to the body and the feeling in relation to that and as you become skillful at these exercises you might actually go back you know several months you might go back several years you might go back to different occasions in your life when stuff was going on that wasn't so uncomfortable and just by coming back to your body all of the time, it comes back to the reality of the here and now. But for now, that's as far as we're going to go with the, with the tracking exercises. Um, 
We can go from the mildly uncomfortable experience to the, the, the quite uncomfortable experience, depending how comfortable you get with the exercises. So, what might be happening at this stage, and, and certainly what will, 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 will be happening um, at some stage is, but some, some of the actual fence cells are beginning to kind of create a little bit of energy in the body, is beginning to create that kind of um, the feelings in your belly uh, where the, the, the energy is building up, you know, the traumatic energy is building up and it's looking for a way for expressing itself. So we're gonna look at some things now that we use which is called discharge activation. And discharge activation is that typical fight or flight situation where um, when we're kind of frightened, when we're traumatized, our ability to fight or our ability to get away is usually enhanced. And as long as we do get away, then usually we've got this kind of natural uh, traumatic discharge of energy, which allows us to be able to more or less get up and kind of get on uh, with our lives. That's in the, in the ideal world. Um, for a lot of us, we haven't managed to do that in, in, in such a, a healthy way. And part of this kind of 12 step exercise approach is to be able to re-experience that and retrain ourselves to be able to do that. So we're going to look at a, a couple of ways now of uh, discharging the energy, the trauma energy that's built up in our system. So myself and Nicole are going to stand up. And the first exercise we do is called pushing hands. So literally we'll have a pushy and a pusher. So if you have one leg in front of the other and one leg behind the other, if you're pushing, you're pushing reasonably hard and the other person is yielding, but not easily, you need to feel the pressure. And then as soon as you've gone far enough, the other person becomes a pusher and they push hard and you feel it. Now it needs to be enough that you actually feel the movement of the body going forward and you feel maybe the agitation, maybe the tension, maybe even a bit of anger you need to be able to hold that when you're yielding and when you're pushing as well. Now what you often do is, when you're doing that, if you then get eye contact for a second, eye contact will change the pressure. It might give you more pressure, it might give you less pressure. And when you're doing pushing or pushing, if the pushy feels that the pressure is coming off of the eye contact, then just lose eye contact again. Because when you've got eye, eye contact, you just get a bit more pressure on that. When you get eye contact, What's actually happening is you get more connected to other. Um, and by removing the eye contact, it allows you to be back in your own body as well. So there's one of the pushing hands. Another one is, which gives you a little bit more power in terms of your getting away. So if you just put back to back hands here, and as I'm pushing, you can see the way that Nicole is yielding and I've got an exit there. And as Nicole does the same, she's got an exit there. So you're pushing out of the way and you've got your exit and you've got your freedom, which is really important in terms of uh, flight. And you're still pushing, still getting that fight, and you still escape. So, in terms of trauma release, you're winning. Okay. There's another exercise we sometimes do, which people, some people like it, some people don't, and it's a bit. We put our back to each other like this. So, a good strong back to each other. Separate the legs forward a little bit, and almost like you sit down then back to back. And then one person pushes like that, and then the other person pushes back, and it's the exact same thing, where you're beginning to actually feel comfortable, you're grounded, you're pushing back and forward. Now some people prefer the hands, some people prefer this. I know, I think we both prefer the hands, but a lot of people prefer that. It gives them a kind of a solid amount uh, of, um, of energy to push, push off each other. Okay, so there's the pushing hands exercise. We'll, um, I think we'll sit down for the next exercise. Okay, so another thing, that we often find uh, is that in our past, we haven't been able to get away. You know, we might've been bullied, uh, we might've kind of uh, been physically attacked or sexually attacked, and uh, part of the difficulty is we didn't get away. So this next exercise is to discharge the traumatic energy, but also to assume and to recreate the experience of actually getting away. So what we'll do here is have a nice, good, solid cushion maybe in front of us. Uh, again, sitting in the chair, put the cushion down. Rest your feet on the cushion. And what we're gonna do is as fast as we can, without actually damaging ourselves, we're going to cycle our legs, as if we were running, running, running away. But before we, we, we do that, imagine a place of safety. So perhaps imagine you're being chased by an animal you don't like, and imagine a place of safety where you're gonna to get to by running and running and running. So just watch it, we cycle as fast as we can. As fast as we can, down the cushion. Really go, 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 and imagine yourself escaping, getting away, getting away, getting up to that safe space, up on top of the rock perhaps, and you just get there and you just sit there and be aware of that sense of having escaped, 
having got away. Some people try and imagine that they've got to somebody else, that somebody else creates that safe person. Just become aware of your heartbeat, become aware of the sensations in your body. Become aware of perhaps kind of your blood pressure being up. And then just allow yourself to do that final stage of the flight mechanism. It's where we just allow ourselves to collapse. So slowly but surely, allow our hands to move down our body. Forward down our body. Allow our back to bend slowly from the lower spine down, all the way down. Head down as far as it can go. And just as you get to the bottom, allow that kind of profound sigh. <sighs> as we experience in some of the other material. And just allow yourself to completely collapse into total helplessness. And then, slowly but surely, starting at the base of your spine, one vertebrae at a time, moving your hands up your legs, very slowly, feel yourself, one vertebrae at a time, coming upright, slowly but surely, upright, into your power. Back to that upright, safe, grounded, centered body. Hands on your lap, hands on the arms of the chair. And then just remember to take in your surroundings and orientate yourself do quite a lot of work inside yourself, with yourself. Just notice the people in the room, maybe some of the noises, some of the smells. Reorientate yourself to where you are, what's going on, just to reconnect to the outside world. As a kind of a final settling, it's a couple of exercises we can go as a, as, a, as a kind of a final settling. So we put, for example, we just put our right hand just on that place, just on our felt sense, just above our belly button maybe. Left hand just uh, below our throat on our chest. And then we put our right hand under our left arm, pit, and our right hand across the top of our right arm. Just hold that there for a few minutes. Feel ready, just bring our left hand back down to the arm of the chair or lap. Bring our right hand down to the arm of the chair or lap. Just bring our left hand up to our chest, just above our heart. Right hand up to our forehead. Just gently hold them there and just allow the experience and the connection to occur. As we settle back down into that centered, grounded place before we were before we did the exercises. Okay, ready, we just bring our arms back down to the arm of the chair in our lap. Again, this set of exercises um, can be self-taught from a really good manual, Peter Levine's 12-step approach. It's always good to do it with a supporter, um, but not necessarily with a professional or a, you know, specialist trained individual, it can be a family member.